Hey everybody, happy Torch Thursday. Welcome to the Thursday live tutorial stream where we will be playing with fire here on the Beating Dream stream. How's everybody doing? I know I saw, hi Lori, I know I saw some of you this afternoon at noon for our frisky feline cat toy, which I'm going to keep far away from my torch tonight because it's extremely flammable. So, um, let's talk tools and supplies for this evening's tutorial. There's a lot and I, I'm not prepared tonight. I definitely do not have everything gathered. So it's just going to kind of be an on the fly sort of, sort of thing. And why is my butt buzzing? I have no idea. Apparently that was an imaginary butt buzz. So what do you need to do this evening's tutorial? You're going to need some 16 gauge wire. And that's going to be um, pretty much the entirety of our ring. So that is going to, ooh. Where are you here? Um, so that's going to be our, our ring base and also our setting is going to be 16 gauge wire. You're going to need some kind of a stone and this setting does work best if you have something that is flat on the bottom. So something that's flat on the bottom like a rose cut. So I have this rose cut. Um, bronze sheen sapphire that I'm going to use and then you're going to need some easy solder and some extra easy solder let's see there's extra easy and it's also extra easy and this one's stuck in the drawer that's aha easy cool so easy solder and extra easy solder. So how was Christmas shopping? Lori, was it crazy? Was it fun? Did you find everything that you were looking for? I am curious. I am, um, as always, last minute with my Christmasing because that's how I do. Being in retail, I have to pack up my um, father and stepmother's Christmas presents and, oh boy, sorry, uh -oh. and ship them as well as my grandmother's. <laughs> Alex is going down already. Right? No, I have caffeine. Okay. It's here in the thing. I just need to drink it. But yes, so as typical for me, my Christmasing is behind, but I'm interested to know how people like Lori, who are um, more on top of things than I am, how your Christmas shopping was. Okay, that's fair. Awesome. All right, so as far as tools go, this is a soldering tutorial. That means that there are a lot of tools involved. If you solder already, you probably have um, all of the, oh my God, Lori. Now I'm officially ashamed. Because if I can get my dad and stepmom's presents shipped by the end of this week, that's going to be way ahead for me. I'm just going to play the I work in retail at Christmas card and once again I'm not sending anything to children so if the adults get their presents on December 27th they can just be fine with that. It, oh my god. I've never been that person. I've never been that person even before it was, hold on I've worked in retail my whole life. but. I've never been that person who's done Christmas shopping by mid-November. Just, no, nope. It's never been me. It's never <coughs> gonna be me. It just isn't. But good on you. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> um, okay, Lori, well, if you want to include me on that wish list, I can, I can, I can rock at you like five things right now. Ooh, yay, Sharon. Yeah, okay, so my so my problem, being a, a 43-year-old, mostly adult person, is, um, is I have two parents, and I had basically, uh, I have two parents, and I had three Christmas presents that I wanted this year. I, and this is how boring I am. This is, this is the boringness of me. I wanted an ironing board, 
I wanted a renewal of my Arboretum membership and I wanted a portable, rechargeable, battery jumping thing for my car. So I, I got two thirds of those. I got the Arboretum membership and the ironing board. The, the car jumping thing, I'm just going to have to, you know, punt at some point. Um, I know, but like, I, I, how have I gotten to this point where it's like, my Christmas list is literally so practical. Like, no, I don't want diamond jewelry. I don't want, you know, give me a gold bracelet. Like, no, I want an ironing board and I want, you know, and I want a portable car battery jumping thing, which also, by the way, the ones they have now, you can actually charge them up and then you can use them to power your devices as well. Um, and, and then, up, you know, and I don't use my Arboretum membership as much as I should, but I love it. I just love it. It, it feeds my soul to know that I can just go to the Dallas Arboretum anytime and it's free. And I don't go there as often as I should, but it just makes me so happy to know that I can. Um, that's fair. No, kitchen gadgets, I have plenty of kitchen gadgets. Yeah, it was car gadgets this year. Car gadgets and ironing, like, I, I have managed to live 43 years without a proper ironing board, because I had an over-the-door ironing board for most of my, you know, 20s and 30s, but I don't really have a good place for an over-the-door ironing board at this point, so I actually want, like, a real proper freestanding ironing board. Okay. Dude, those are like 60 bucks on Amazon. Seriously. For an ironing board. That's why it was on my Christmas list. Because, wow. So. Yeah, I, you know, I, because I sew, Lori, I'll, I'll use it when I sew and also... <sighs> At this point in my life now, I really don't need um, saris, but back when I was wearing saris when I was with Arun, um, they're really helpful for when you're pleating the saris and um, ironing them. So that's obviously something that I don't need in my life anymore, but still, does not make you a bad person. Like, good for you, Lori. Um, but I, I definitely, like, I want a proper, like, real ironing board. I've never had one, um, of my own. And, you know, and it's one of those things, it's one of those things, like, you get it once and I'm gonna have the same ironing board until I'm, you know, until I die. But I'm just like, $60? Are you serious? Like, really? But my mom got me an ironing board for Christmas. So instead of a hippopotamus for Christmas, I, I want an ironing board for Christmas is, is kind of my song this year. Okay, so let's make this ring. So I've got my soldering surface down here. I've got my torch, which I have freshly filled with butane. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 16 gauge wire and I'm going to make this band. So we're going to pick a size and I'm going to go with size 7. Um, this is actually a really fun thing. Heather found this um, when we had a, a private ring class the other day. But this is actually a ring mandrel that is metal coated plastic. And this is nice because it doesn't weigh a ton. Okay, so I can use this one handed and it's not as difficult as using my regular completely solid steel ring mandrel. So super jazzed about this. So we're going to go for size 7 now, as you probably remember from a number of classes that I have taught, you are going to need to go smaller than the size you're going for in order to get it to spring up to the size that you want. So if I'm going to go for a size 7, I'm going to go up to a size 4, take my 16 gauge wire and just wrap it around my mandrel. Like so and and you're gonna see when I let it go it's gonna get a little bit bigger I'm just gonna slide it down to my size 7 which is right there and then I'm gonna grab a marker
and I'm going to mark across my two pieces of wire. And then I can take it off and I can cut. Ooh, I did not grab any tools. Okay, be right back. I need to go grab some tools. So now I have tools, including cutters. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut this ring. So mm. I'm sorry, Lori. It hurts me to read that. If I never experience negative Fahrenheit temperatures again in my life, I will be so happy. Literally, like the last time I experienced negative Fahrenheit temperatures was when my grandfather was in the hospital prior to his passing. Um, and I went to Wisconsin in February and it was minus 19. Like that's literally the level of family crisis that it takes to, to convince me to endure those temperatures because they it's so awful it's absolutely horrible and i i i i still do not understand why people actually live in places that have temperatures like that because they're so terrible they're the worst yeah no I, I if it were me i would go delivery but now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut this ring so I've got my lines, one there, one there. Now, when you're flush cutting, you want to take the flat side of your cutters and then put it towards the side of your metal that is actually going to be making your piece. So that's that. And flat side towards there and cut. I mean, that's fair, Lori, and I'm not a huge fan of big, massive bugs, but, yeah, like, seriously, minus 22 degrees, no thank you, that's what I have to say about that. But yeah, no, the the um, the belligerent flying cockroaches that we have down here, I mean, there's definitely, a, you know, there are definitely times when I'm like, belligerent flying cockroaches, negative temperatures in the winter, like which of these is actually worse, but I'm still going to go with I can generally avoid the belligerent flying cockroaches, the minus 22 degree Fahrenheit temperatures in the winter are inescapable. So I've got my, <laughs> that's just my personal logic. You know, you, you, you do you, <laughs> you live your life by your own logic. Mine is not necessarily good for everybody, but it works for me. Okay. So this is my ring base. And since I use my cutters to cut this, I'm going to need to file it in order to flatten these ends down. So I'm going to grab my flat file and just file the ends. And flip it around. <coughs> Alright, and then I'm going to go ahead and tension fit this, 
which means that I'm just going to manipulate my ends past each other until they will sit flush against each other without me having to hold them there. All right, y'all are having too much fun over there. I hear the giggles. Sorry. Not sorry. You shouldn't be sorry for having fun. Just You should be sorry for not including me. Okay, so that's my tension fit circle. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut the wire for my setting as well, which is going to be two pieces. And they're going to be two fairly small pieces. So about an inch each. Oof. That's fair, Lori. So yeah, when I was um, when I was in uh, when I was in high school, um, I was in the suburbs, and um, I was bused into the city because I went to the high school for the performing arts. And yeah, the, we actually had two my freshman year. We had two cold days, um, so they actually closed school and the buses weren't running or anything because the ambient temperature um, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin was minus 40 and that was um, minus 40 Fahrenheit, not Celsius. Um, and, and they considered that too cold for kids to be out waiting for the bus. Um, so yeah, that is, that is literally the coldest I've ever experienced in, oh really? That's where it equalizes. Okay, good to know. That's that's literally literally the coldest I've ever experienced in my life. Was that was that minus forty ambient, and then with the wind chill, of course, you know, it was a real feel of more like you know minus fifty because wind chill is a bitch. But yeah, we actually did have two cold days when I was in uh, high school because of that. So, um, yeah, in other news, winter sucks. So I've got my ring cut and tension fit. Now I've got my prongs cut. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bend these at the middle. I'm going to bend each of them into a V shape, like so. So I've got one V and a second V. Also, um, so in funny stories from Allison's youth. So there was one day, and this was not when it was minus 40 degrees outside, thank goodness, but I thought I'd missed the bus. And it turns out the bus was just running late, but, but I was, this was in middle school, so I, and, and probably early middle school, so, you know, sixth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, probably fifth grade. Yeah. So I was, I was old enough to have some concept of distance and time, but not old enough to have a really concrete idea of distance and time. So I decided I had missed the bus, so I was going to walk to school. So school was probably about two miles from my house, um, which, at you know, my brain didn't really process because I was, I was used to being on the bus and of course on the bus took like 10 minutes. And, and so I, so I decide I've missed the bus. I'm going to walk to school. So I'm walking to school and as I'm walking to school, um, you know, about 20 minutes down the road, the bus passes me and all the people from my class are like making fun of me out the window. Does the bus stop to pick me up? Of course not. Cause it's not a regular bus stop. Um, it's a school bus, not city bus. So, so I just keep trudging and trudging and trudging and trudging and finally I get there. And of course, at this point, I'm like two hours late for school. I'm crying because I have blisters on my feet because, of course, my mother had not purchased my shoes with the idea that I was going to walk two miles to school. So I'm crying. I've got blisters on my feet. I've been jeered at by my classmates on the bus. And I've missed, you know, one and a half periods of class. So I walk into the, walk into the office. I'm just sobbing. 
and bless the bless all of the school secretaries of the world because they are just like the glue that holds everything together. So the the school secretary sits me down and I think she got me some water or a juice box or something. She called my mom to let my mom know I was okay because of course they had called my mom because I didn't show up to school on time. So called my mom to let her know that I wasn't dead. Um, you know, sat me down, gave me a juice box or water or whatever. And, and, you know, and let me catch my breath and then, of course, you know, sent me off to class. But yes, that was, that was whatever, like, you know, nine-year-old Allison deciding she was going to be self-sufficient and completely failing at the, at, at the problem. So now, 43-year-old Allison is going to play with fire. So, you know, that's a journey. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to solder Yes, I realize that was the most tortured segue ever, but it is what it is. So we're going to go ahead and solder that, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take our setting, and we're going to solder the two points together. Like so. Also, I do, you know, having grown up in Wisconsin, I do have the snowsuit trauma, which Lori, I'm sure you're familiar with the snowsuit trauma, possibly from your own childhood or from your children's childhood of the, um, you know, when it's actually cold enough that your parents insist that you have to wear either the snow pants or the full snowsuit to school and, and you know, and it's just the most heinously embarrassing thing. Um, and also the, the moon boots, those were, those were a big thing when I was a kid. So yeah, when you had to wear the snow pants and the moon boots, you were just like the least cool kid ever. Because snow pants and moon boots, and one thing, God forbid you had to wear the whole snowsuit because then you were just, you were a pariah. You were absolutely a snowsuit pariah and there, there was no recovering from that. Um, luckily, my social life as a child was already pretty much irredeemable so you know the the snow snowsuit time didn't really hurt me any because I was a painfully awkward child um, you know I'm I am as an adult able to fluently speak to the internet but actual people still not my forte okay so I've got my ring and I've got my setting so I'm going to grab my easy solder and I'm going to cut two tiny pieces of my easy solder, one for there and one for there. Okay, so I am going to grab some flux. What the flux? And I'm going to grab a brush. And so flux, for anybody who is not familiar, is a chemical that keeps your metal from oxidi oxidizing so you can solder. Um, and the flux that I use is a borax-based flux, which basically means don't eat it because borax is poisonous. Um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean that that's fair like uh, and and I will say at this point in my life you know I would prioritize being warm over being cool but at that point in my life it, being accepted among my peers was way more important to me so I severely resented I'm um, gonna go ahead and flex all my joints I severely resented every time that my mother forced me to wear the moon boots and snowmobile suit. For sure. Oh, and then there was the there was a ski trip with my middle school class where we went to um, an artificial ski slope, um, and and I was like, and 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 bless my mom for actually, you know going along with this because I was like, I can't wear snow pants. I can't wear snow pants. I'll be so uncool. So she actually went and bought me ski pants that were not puffy. Wow. 
Yeah, and I, I'm sure they probably cost more than she could afford, but she she did it for me. Were you and, magically cool? Uh, no. Shockingly, I was not magically cool. Mm. Because there really is no magically cool. Um, I, I'm going to tell one more story and then I'm going to slaughter this. So in middle school, I became a cheerleader because cheerle cheerleaders are cool, right? Right? Yes, that's what I've heard. Yeah, no, I just wound up um, on the squadron of misfit cheerleaders. Um, all of my my misfit friends, um, we were all in the same cheerleading squad together, and we were the squad that everyone made fun of. Even though, objectively, we were the best squad in the school, um, we were all of the misfits, so we, yeah, we were, we were made fun of constantly. So... In case anyone is wondering, being a cheerleader does not magically make you cool. Having snow pants that don't have puffiness to them does not magically make you cool. Middle school just sucks. Middle school, no one's cool there. It, no one's cool there. It's just Especially the worst. If you try. It's the <laughs> worst. Awful. The worst. It's awful. It's where everyone's hormones are raging and everyone is nasty AF and like. Cheers to everyone who survived it, because it is the worst. So, okay. now, now let once again, now let's pl let's take our tortured middle school PTSD and let's play with fire. Hey, yeah. Then, oh, were you jumped ahead, Lori? That was thankfully that was not a problem that I had. I was always the young guest in my class because I have a summer birthday, I have a July birthday, but um. Yeah, I was I wasn't that far ahead. I graduated high school at 17 and um by the time I started college I had just turned 18. So yeah, wow, that's But middle school is just the worst. It's just awful. It's just the worst. And and bless anybody who teaches middle school because I could not Okay, so let's play with fire. So I have my uh, two pieces of solder. I have my two things I need to solder. I need a pick. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and solder this joint here and that joint there. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and heat these until my flux turns clear. So, and then I'm going to go over and grab my solder. So when it balls up, I can just grab it on my pick, like so, and then just touch it to my joint, and make sure you got contact. There we go. Okay, so solder flows towards heat. So I heated that, got my solder to flow towards it. I'm going to do another piece here. Ink, ink, yes, ink. Yes, see, I said it. I'm so happy. Alright, so those two pieces are soldered. I'm going to make sure they're not stuck to my board. Oh, that one totally is. There we go. And I'm just going to let them cool for a moment. So, thanks everyone so much for hanging out with us on the Torch Thursday stream. Tomorrow night is Zoom Crafty Cocktail Time. Um, so that means we will not be here on Twitch. We will not be on Facebook. We will be on Zoom tomorrow night um, crafting and having fun together. Um, I will, ouch, that's hot. Duh. Um, I will not be teaching a class, but Heather and I will be available to offer you any assistance that you might need if you've Zoomed with us before. It's the same credentials if you've never Zoomed with us. Go ahead and email us, beatingdreamsdallas at gmail.com. We will make sure to send you an email with the link to that Zoom Saturday night. It's going to be another tutorial followed by a live merchandise sale. I still have two trays of 8-inch strands 
that I have somehow managed not to actually get through because I keep selling other things instead. So I've got two trays of eight inch strands for Saturday night's sale. And that's going to be a really fun time. Also, mark your calendars. New Year's Eve, we are doing a Zoom from 6 to 8. Um, so if you want to hang out and do some crafting before you go and um, paint the town red for New Year's Eve, you can definitely Zoom with us on New Year's Eve as well. So, Or craft to paint the town red. How would one do that? By painting something red. That's fair. Um, however, Christmas Eve, Saturday the 24th, we are going to be dark. We are off here at Baiting Dreams at 4 and we are not going to be streaming Christmas Eve, so um, we love you all, but at that point, we're all going to be ready to face plant. And by we're all, I mean Heather and I are going to be ready to face plant. I'm already ready to face plant. I mean, hell yes, me too, but no time for face planting right no. this second. Okay, so I've got my ring that I soldered together. I'm going to take my mandrel and I just want to pull that down my mandrel. Make sure that it's the right size, which it is, size 7, and make sure that it's round. And then I'm going to go ahead and solder my ring to my setting. This is going to be accomplished with my extra easy solder. So I just want a small piece of that. And I'm going to flex my joint and my solder. And I need tweezers. So, Lori, did you graduate with like a BA at 19? Or how, how does that work in your educational system? Just randomly curious. Okay, so I've got the tweezers and I'm going to start by placing my solder. So I'm going to heat everything up. I mean, word, that's awesome. Okay, so I got my solder, and I'm going to drop that onto my setting, and then I'm going to take my ring, and I'm going to hold it against my setting, and I'm going to heat everything until my solder flows and joins my setting and my ring together like so so then when you pick them up they should come up together so at this point I would probably take this I would put it in a tumbler um, or put it in a pickle pot and polish it by hand either one of those is totally um, valid but what I'm actually going to do for tonight is I'm going to skip all that polishing and I'm going to go ahead and set my sapphire because my sapphire is sturdy enough that it will be okay in the tumbler after. Uh, but again, don't ever count on that. Don't count on the fact that your stone can withstand the tumbler. Sometimes I just take shortcuts because I want to get done on time. And also, now that I've talked about face planting, I definitely want to do that as well. Oof. God, and today wasn't even like a super lucrative day, was it? Yeah, well, I can check the numbers on my phone. Yuck. 
Yuck, 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 yuck. So much yuck. So hey everybody, we're having a sale on Saturday. We're gonna focus. We're gonna focus, I know. I mean, to be fair, I was way more focused today than I was yesterday because I did sleep. Um, I just need to sleep more between now and Saturday and oh, I need to like cleanse some of these feels from my being because they're not being helpful. Mm, no. Okay, so this is my setting. So, so literally it is this simple. It's a circle with an X on the top. So I'm going to lay my stone in there and then I'm going to bend my prongs up over my stone. So what you want to do when you're holding your stone is you want to make sure that you ho are holding it relatively centered and that you keep it centered, okay? So don't let the prongs push it around, which they're going to want to do. So I'm going to take my chinos and I've got my stone held centered and I'm just going to bring my prongs up and over the top. and bend them like so. I'm going to go to the opposite side. Once you get two of these done, it becomes exponentially easier. Except now it's on the floor, so BRB. Well, it's make it easier. No, it doesn't. It's true. Also, it's a black star sapphire, so um, that's definitely not going to make it easier to Now that you're on the floor. I'm not on the floor. I'm close to the floor. I don't know why I'm like that. I don't know either. Okay. That's okay. Change of pace. <laughs> Hi Corvus! We are live! Yes. I just dropped my stone on the floor, so I found on the floor a completely different stone that I'm now going to use to finish the project. <laughs> I know, right? It, I feel like it should be sleeping time, but I have a stream, so I need to finish this project and then maybe I can have sleeping time after that, though I do still have to get home. so. So, change of pace. Now we're going to use this star-shaped star stone to do our ring, because once again, I dropped my sapphire on the floor and I couldn't find it. But this was on the floor, so we're just going to go ahead and call that a gift from the universe. <laughs> I stole the sapphire accidentally. I mean, it's somewhere down there. But anyway, so... Hold your stone centered and then take your. Take it and throw it. it, it did it come over by you? I feel like it did. Okay, I didn't see what was a gift from the universe. Uh, it, it's a star shaped smoky quartz. Oh, the oh. young hirer has gone for the day. Everyone has gone for the day except for Heather and I, and apparently I am still on the struggle bus. Okay. We're not going to say Heather isn't. But, okay, maybe maybe we should just call it. There, there could be a stone. I heard a stone <laughs> this way. I mean, it did go that way, but if, if you can't find it, that's the wrong button. Oh my gosh. Struggle bus, both of us, Heather and I. We're and everyone's struggling. And, and everyone else is mad at us because we're struggling. That's true. That is. It's great. It's awesome. 
the worst sadness in the world. Yeah. It's to be in trouble because you're struggling. Yeah. It's 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 freaking fantastic. But here's a gold wire uterus. Do you need one? I, I don't need a uterus, thank you. I don't really want the one I have. I mean, it's got fallopian tubes. I don't want those either. Whole reproductive system. No, I don't want it. No, I... <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I reject your reality and substitute my own. Well. Okay, I'm just gonna go grab another stone, so BRB. such an awesome target. Well, I mean, you are a great target. The, the stones just launch themselves right at me without any <laughs> yes. effort of, on your part. It's true. Okay, so I have my third. Okay, so this is stone number three, by the way. So this Which is, means it's the charm. This is how hard I am struggling this evening. So again, hold your stone centered and grab your chain nose pliers. Bend your wires up and over. And snug them down up over the top of your stone, like so. And then I'm going to go to my opposite side and do the same. <laughs> we would never think you were mean, Lori. Here's number three. And so once again, I'm just snugging that over the edge of the stone and then bending it up. Um, so, so yes. So Lori had a really good question. Is there something that can adhere the setting, the stone to the setting, but dissolve in the tumbler? Um, I feel like rubber cement would probably do that. Um, so CA glue, aka super glue, you can dissolve with a torch, but it wouldn't necessarily dissolve in the tumbler. Um, so I think rubber cement would probably be your adhesive of choice in that situation. Um, unclear, Sharon, because the, the pearls were picked up by the father of the groom, um, I did call the mother of the bride or groom, groom. I'm not really sure, the mother of the groom, and um, inform her of the potential sizing issue, and she said she thought everything would be fine, so the father of the groom picked up the pearls, and we shall see tomorrow, I guess, if everything is okay. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and trim these prongs. So I've got them all kind of snugged over my stone. So I'm just going to cut off at an angle. So I want to make sure I still have enough to kind of fold over my stone. Okay, that didn't sound like something you should be throwing at me. Well, luckily it went the opposite direction. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and cinch them down. I know, right? Like, why would you choose a wedding time near Christmas? I don't know, because some people are crazy like that. Once again, my, my friend Tony got married on the 26th, so she could reuse all of her Christmas decor as wedding decor. But, yeah, you could not. Also, the fact that I hate Christmas. So, yeah, it, it, I'm, I'm not going to say you couldn't pay me enough. 
to get married at Christmas because you definitely could pay me enough, but it would cost a lot. I mean, if someone's like, hey, we'll pay for your entire wedding and also give you $2 million, um, first of all, I would need to find somebody who was willing to marry me. And then after that, I would be like, hell yes, I will get married at Christmas if that's what it takes. Um, the first part of that being actually the, the more difficult part. But, um, but yeah, other, other than that, like if, if I, you know, if there's not some kind of massive incentive involved, forget it. Never, never getting married at Christmas. Mostly because I would just be an insufferable bitch. Um, to my future husband and everyone else involved because once again after being in retail for um, 20 plus years I hate Christmas but by the way y'all I want to get married at Christmas happy holidays just saying huh I know right okay so there we go and then the last thing I'm gonna do so I've got my prongs cut and I've snug them down over my stones, so my stones in there nice and securely, and then the last thing I'm going to do, and you want to make sure that you don't hit your stone on this, is you just want to file those prongs down so you get rid of the burr from the cutter. So see how there's a little burr in the middle of that? You just want to make that go away. I know, right? This was actually, like, this jersey was not a bad choice, even though it was stone number three. And then if you're not completely round, you can um, put this at this point back on your wing mandrel and round it out. And um, you can see that it's not, it's kind of cattywampus. So I'm going to put it on my ring mandrel and then I'm just going to use that as resistance to bend my stone into place. And there we go. So after several stone changes, we have a druzy ring. Um, and then this whole thing I can put in the tumbler and it'll get nice and shiny. So thank you all so much for hanging out with us on our Torch Thursday tutorial um, this Thursday evening. So tomorrow is Zoom, okay? So tomorrow at 6 p.m. you will not find us on Facebook. You will not find us on Twitch. You will find us on Zoom. If you need those Zoom... Um, if I find the Black Star Sapphire Kenneth, it would probably be about $40. I know, right? I will get some rest, Lori. I, I slept last night. Apparently, I need to sleep more. But thank you all so much for hanging out with us. And we will see you all back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream Saturday at 6 p.m. Um, with a tutorial followed by a sale tomorrow night again. We will be on Zoom, um, so yeah, hopefully I will see all of you there um, tomorrow night on Zoom. Well, it's the one time you get to see your beautiful faces. Um, and then I will see y'all back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream, Saturday at 6. Alright, thanks everyone so much and have a good night. Bye!